Welcome to Chapter 3 Lectures, Communication, the Vital Link in Supervisory Management. I'll briefly discuss the learning objectives for this chapter. Communication is the process of transmitting information and understanding between a sender and receiver. Communication is only successful if the receiver understands the message but does not require that the receiver agree with whatever, the, whatever message has been sent. The ability to communicate effectively is one of the most important qualities leading to supervisory success, as almost every aspect of supervision requires successful communications to be effective. Organizations have formal and informal channels of communication. Formal channels of communication operate downward, upward, and horizontally. These communication channels primarily serve to link people and departments in order to accomplish organizational objectives. The informal channel in an organization is called the grapevine. Most grapevines carry rumors as well as facts and can give supervisors valuable insights into how employees in that firm feel about their jobs and the organization. There are four primary methods of communication, oral, written, visual, and body language. Oral communication is instantaneous because it enables face-to-face -face interaction but leaves no permanent record. Written communications have as their major benefit their permanency, as do visual communication, like pictures, charts, and videos. While spoken and written words are the most important means of communication, body language, a person's actions, gestures, posture, also communicate often in more powerful ways than words themselves. There are six major categories of barriers to effective communication. Noise is any obstacle that distorts messages between people. Language and vocabulary differences include the use of specialized words like jargon and the idea that some words have many different meanings. The status and position of both the sender and the receiver will also impact communications as, as will people's normal resistance to change or most new ideas. In fact, perceptual barriers come in many forms, including biases and stereotypes that can influence how a message is interpreted. Finally, strong comments that can cut short a conversation and cause one or both parties to become indifferent or angry are called killer phrases or insensitive words, and poor timing on the part of the sender or receiver can also negatively influence communication. Several steps can be taken that will enable supervisors to overcome most or all of the communication barriers. First, supervisors should adequately prepare with what they wish to communicate. Second, supervisors should gather adequate feedback during the communication process to ensure the message was received as intended. During the face-to-face -face communication, the supervisor can observe the receiver's verbal and nonverbal responses and can ask the receiver to restate the message. For, re for written communication, the supervisor can obtain feedback by asking a colleague to comment on the message before it's sent and by discussing it with the receivers after it's sent to check understanding. Using clear, direct language that the receiver can understand will facilitate communication. Both parties should agree on a time to talk when neither will be overly stressed and when both will have time to really listen to each other. Also, to be effective, words, words must be reinforced by consistent actions. Communication is the process of transmitting information and understanding. Communication, however, does not require agreement. It's the process that links all managerial functions because every interaction requires skillful handling of the information. Now more than ever, effective communication requires mutual respect and trust. Effective communication requires two-way exchange. Communication always involves at least two people, a sender and a receiver. Effective communication also includes both sending and receiving, which means understanding, information. A supervisor's effectiveness will depend greatly on the ability to transfer information or ideas to and from employees, other supervisors, and higher managers. Communication skills can be learned and developed. Effective leaders often gather information firsthand by getting out and about, commonly known as management by wandering around. Such a management style facilitates upward communication and builds morale, enabling the manager to learn things from employees that they may not communicate otherwise. 
Formal communication channels usually parallel the lines of authority in an organizational structure. Downward communication is most often used by higher management and is usually informative and directive, requiring action on the part of subordinates. Upward communication is usually, is usually of an informing and reporting nature, including questions, suggestions, and complaints by employees. Supervisors' upward communication should be timely, accurate, and in a form that will enable necessary action to be taken. Horizontal or lateral communication is primarily concerned with the communication between departments or people at the same level within an organization who operate under different functions. It usually involves discussions and meetings to accomplish tasks that, that cross departmental lines. The grapevine is the informal, unofficial communication channel. It is a perfectly natural outgrowth of people's communication and social needs. The grapevine can offer considerable insight into what employees think and feel. It carries factual information, but it also carries half-truths, rumors, private interpretations, suspicions, and other distorted or inaccurate information. Unlike formal communication channels, the grapevine has no definite pattern or stable membership. The grapevine can sometimes spread information more rapidly than formal channels of communication and may, may be used to clarify and supplement official communications. The grapevine is a natural part of any organization. It is unlikely that any supervisor could or should eliminate a firm's grapevine. It may be helpful for supervisors to listen to their firm's grapevine since this informs them not only of what subordinates are thinking, but also who is likely to spread information. The best cure for rumors is to expose the true facts to all employees. The grapevine becomes more active during periods of insecurity and anxiety. If employees believe that their supervisor is concerned about them and will make every effort to keep them informed, they will tend to disregard rumors and look to the supervisor for proper answers to their questions. Body language includes all observable actions of either the sender or receiver. Body language does not have universal meaning. The message of any one gesture, expression, touch will vary from situation to situation and from culture to culture. Spoken and written words are the most widely used forms of communication, but still require vigilance to ensure that the meaning has been understood as intended. Supervisors often use their oral communication skills more than their written skills, but both must be constantly improved if the supervisor is to, su is to succeed in the organization. Oral communication is generally easier, faster, and more complete, and has more immediate feedback than written communication. There is no permanent record of oral communication, so written communication has a great advantage in this respect. Visual media includes things like pictures, charts, and symbols. These are very powerful methods of communicating, particularly when used in connection with well-chosen words to complete a message. In communications, supervisors should be clear of the objective they're trying to send in their message. This chart gives you a step-by-step -step illustration of how to reach that objective in communication. Noise are all those obstacles that distort messages between people. Jargon is the use of words that are peculiar to a particular occupation or specialty. Such specialized words inhibit communication among people from different backgrounds or even from different departments. Semantics is the multiple meaning of words. Listeners tend to interpret words based on their own perceptions, past experiences, and cultural backgrounds, so supervisors must ensure that the meaning intended is clarified. Most listeners are likely to receive that portion of a message that confirms their present beliefs and they ignore whatever conflicts with those beliefs. We all see the world through our own perceptions, so we all see the world very differently. This is what is meant by perceptual barriers. Stereotyping is the perception that all people in a certain group share common attitudes, values, and beliefs. In the workplace, when men and women's styles of communication are different, it is usually the woman who is told to change. It's important for all employees to say what they mean and mean what they say. 
killer phrases are strong comments like, that's stupid, or don't you understand, that can cut a conversation short and cause one or both, both parties to become indifferent or angry. Anger and indifference are both barriers to communication. Timing often involves situations that have nothing to do with the job at hand, but with distracting events that employees sometimes bring to work in their thoughts. Communication starts when the sender encodes a message to the receiver. The sender addresses th three things, the claim to be made, the evidence to back that claim, and the data to hold the claim. The receiver then decodes or interprets the sender's message, weighing the claim, evidence, and data against his or her own analysis of the situation. Companies must balance an employee's need to have internet availability to access information versus the amount of lost time it will probably experience as employees access the internet for personal use. Supervisors must be clear as to what the internet rules are, what's expected of them, and what isn't allowed. Managers spend about 70 to 90 percent of their time sending and receiving information. Keeping messages short and simple makes the communication exchange much more effective. Status is the attitudes toward a person based on the position he or she occupies. Because people at different levels have different goals, an employee may interpret information differently than a supervisor or manager. Filtering is the process of omitting or softening unpleasant details. Most people are not comfortable presenting their boss with an unpleasant information, so, so some amount of filtering may occur. Tension and anxiety can be serious barriers to effective communication. Supervisors must think through the message to be communicated so that it's clear in the sender's mind before it's sent. Planning what to say ahead of time reduces potential misunderstandings later and helps supervisors achieve their goals. Feedback is the receiver's verbal or non-verbal response to a message. Feedback can be used to determine whether the receiver understood the message as intended. Feedback techniques include watching for non-verbal clues such as facial expressions, asking the receiver for confirmation or understanding, asking the receiver or volunteering on the part of the receiver to restate the information just received, asking a colleague to read written communications for comprehension before they're sent, and talking with the receiver after sending a written communication to make sure that the information was understood well. Direct and clear language includes a useful motto, KISS, keep it short and simple. To ensure a calm atmosphere, it's best to communicate when both parties are calm and not burdened by unusual tension or stress. Setting appointed times to meet in a quiet room is a good way to achieve a calm atmosphere. It's important to take the time and effort to listen. Effective communication requires listening, not just hearing. Listening helps to reduce misunderstandings and supervisors who listen can learn more about employee values and attitudes toward the work environment than supervisors who don't listen. Repeating information several times, using different words or different methods, helps to communicate the message as long as it is not repeated so often that people ignore it. It's important to reinforce your words with action. One of the best ways to give meaning to messages is to act accordingly. This also enhances the supervisor's credibility.